All right, we're going to turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And if you're a guest joining us online today, I want to express a very, very warm welcome to you. And uh, we're, it's very unfortunate that at this time, we're unable to have more people in church. We're limited to our, our 75 plus volunteers. Uh, but if you would like to be in church, then please make sure you message uh, the church or uh, email at office at calvarychapel.com.au. We'll make sure that you get a priority seat to be able to come to church. Don't forget tonight, there's still some seats in tonight's service. So you'll be able to avail yourself of that to be able to be in church. There's, there's something about being here, amen, amongst the brethren. Uh, I think we're all kind of worn out of worshiping in our, our lounge rooms and and getting dressed. I don't know if too many people get dressed up on Sunday at home. I saw, I saw a meme. I saw a meme. It had two photos. What the pastor thinks hap- what's, is happening at home. And it had everyone sitting on the lounge, you know, with their suits and worshiping God. And what really happens, and it had someone in their pajamas laying on their bed. Look at you. There. I, hope, I hope it's the former, not the latter, all right? I hope everyone's on the lounge, suits on, worshiping God, you know. I'm not silly, don't worry. (laughs) Wishful thinking, you might think. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. It's great to have our guests joining us online, especially those that are joining us from India. We have a very big audience joining us from India. Um, Every week, India and the Philippines are two places that our statistics are telling us that we have lots of people joining us every week. And of course, both those places have been very heavily affected by COVID, especially Mizoram in Northeast India, where they're under restrictions, not able to go to church. So they've been joining us and nice and early because it's 6 a.m. service starts for them. So they're up nice and early and all of our staff at the orphanage that we have in Northeast India, they join us as well. Every morning at 6 a.m., be mindful, they get up at 5 a.m. So they're already well into their day at 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Will you let Jesus speak to you today? Will you let Jesus speak to you? Amen. Let's read the words of Jesus. Therefore, I say unto you, do not worry. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not worry. Turn to your other neighbor and say, stop it. (laughs) Nobody wanted to do that. Therefore, I say unto you, this is Jesus, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you're going to put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look up. Everyone say, look up. Don't worry, but, but look up. Look up at the, be- the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them, the birds. Are you not more valuable than they, the birds? Which of you, by the way, in all of your worrying, laying there at night worrying about everything, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Can you change anything about your life just by worrying about it? So why do you worry about your clothing? Why do you worry about what you're going to put on in the provision? Consider the lilies of the field. So look up at the birds. Look down at the lilies of the field. Look how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not as beautiful as one of these. Or was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So if you're worried, Jesus says, you, it's not that you don't have any faith. He says, your faith is little, little. You of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat and what shall we drink and what shall we wear? For after these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. God knows. He knows our needs. But instead of worrying, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its trouble, is its own trouble. There's enough trouble today than having to bring the trouble of tomorrow in today. That's what Jesus says. Can you hear Jesus speaking to you today? Loud and clear. 
Don't worry. He's saying, stop it. Stop it. Don't have faith in me. You can do it. I'm going to provide. Matthew chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, we read it at the beginning in our prayer time. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus told us not to worry. Paul reminded the church, don't be anxious for anything, but pray and God will give you peace. A peace that passes anything that we can understand in the natural. I want to simply speak on this title. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Somebody ought to feel a little bit better right now. Jesus told us, not me, not my words. Jesus told us, you don't have to worry. And so I pray that this word, the words of Jesus will sink into your heart today and you will leave change from this place today with the burden lifted off you, the worry lifted off you because Jesus told us, do not worry. Let's pray. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we feel encouraged. Lord God, we feel challenged because some of us right now are really worried. Oh God, Lord, help us to have faith in you. Help us to look up and to see your provision all around us and look down and see the lilies of the field that you take care of them. And Lord, we are worth more than that to you because you told us. And so, Lord, we put our trust in you. Help us not to worry. Help there to be a transformation in our lives today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. You don't have to worry. 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 You see, have you ever been uh, driving along on a, on a dual carriageway and you know you're going in the wrong direction? It, happen, it happens to me sometimes when I'm coming back from Kutamundra really late at night. And we, I'm going to Kutamundra this afternoon for service at 4 p.m. And there's a, there's a dual carriageway. And what happens is... Um, there's a turnoff that goes to Canberra. And if you miss that turnoff, then you're going to get lost. And uh, that's coming from Yas. And so one day I was going down the dual carriageway and I knew I had to get on the other side. It's, it's, a, it's 10 o'clock at night. The kids are in the back. They're tired. I knew I had to go the other way. But I just couldn't find anywhere. I was tempted to try and bash through the bushes, you know, in that little culvert. But I'd probably get, I'd probably get bogged or something. So I'm, I'm driving. I'm looking for a crossing. And, you know, sometimes that's how life can feel to us. Sometimes that's how we can feel about in life that that we actually know that we're headed in the wrong direction. And we're looking for an opportunity to get on the other way. I want to tell you today that it is no coincidence that you're here today. It's no coincidence that you're joining us online because now is your chance through the power of the Word of God. If you will hearken to the Word of God, if you will hear the Word of God, you can get on to the other track and you can start getting in the right direction. Somebody say amen. And so we've got to get the Word of God into our spirit. It's one thing to have the Word of God bounded in in leather and on pages, but we've got to get the Word of God into our spirit. The Bible says that it is the engrafted Word, the engrafted Word that saves your soul. Now, if you've ever done anything with um, with grafting of, of, of fruit trees, you graft the two together. You get the branch of one and you could get an apricot tree and you could get a nectarine tree and you can graft the two of them together. And so what you can have is you can have apricots and nectarines growing on the same tree because you've grafted them together. But the idea of grafting is that the two branches will stick. Everyone say stick. Okay, it's, it, they've got a stick and they become the same thing. And so when the word is engrafted, We've got to receive the engrafted Word. It's got to get into our spirit. This is simply what's got to happen. When the Word of God is preached, I pray that it sticks to your soul. That it sticks, that it finds not just a resting place, but that it sticks to your soul. And so when the Word of God, which is preached to you, and that's what I'm doing today, I'm preaching to you, But you've got to allow it to become in you, to be grafted into you, to stick to your soul. The Bible says that when it sticks, this is it, it will save your soul. 
James 1.21 says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word. The word. Everyone say the word. The word alone. The word which is able to save your souls. And so the word is so important. It is the word of God which is able to save your soul. We've got great music and we appreciate our musicians. We've got great facilities. We've got great programs. We've got great people. But you've got to find a place, a church that is going to preach the word. You've got to allow the word to stick to your soul because the engrafted word is able to save your soul. The word alone. Everyone say the word. The word alone is able to save your soul. And so worry. We're talking about worry. And I pray this word of unworry will stick to your soul today. That even, even after church, you're going to remember what was preached so that the word preached to you can get in you and stick. And so to worry simply is this. In layman's terms, to think about problems, to think about unpleasant things that might happen. That might happen. This might happen. That might happen. Who knows? That might, that might happen. You know, to worry and to think about unpleasant things that might happen. And by, by worrying or thinking about those unpleasant things, what can happen is that you begin to feel unhappy. You begin to feel frightened. You begin to feel controlled. Controlled by your worry. And this is an age... If you talk to any medical professional, they'll tell you, this is the age of anxiety. Everybody is anxious about something or worried about something. They're worried about their children, worried about their school, worried about their family, worried about their health, worried about their marriage. Married people are worried about their marriage. Single people are worried because they're single. People are worried about their finances. People are worried about the government. People are worried about the world. And I want to tell you today, and it might just sound very cliche, but you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And Jesus told us, he said, do not worry. He said, stop it. Stop. Stop worrying. You say, what do you mean, pastor? I mean, come on. I mean, there's a lot to worry about right now, pastor. There's a lot to worry about in the world. And I, I, I know what it is. We had the bushfires. We were worried about the bushfires. Yeah, and then the bushfires passed and we thought, okay, great, February's been great. We, we don't have to worry now. We had enough to worry in January with all those fires and, and now we're in February, but then March it, boom. Like a slap across the face. It hit us, the global pandemic, and now we're worried about something else. But Jesus told us not to worry. And the Greek word used for worry is the same word that they use for other things, and the Greek use it for the word to become detached or to become unraveled. To become unraveled, unwound, all over the place, unraveled, detached, all over the place. It's the same word. When you worry, when you worry, you allow what you're worried about. You allow your circumstances to unravel you. You allow it to make you come unstuck. It, you allow it to make you become all over the place. It, and when you worry, you allow your circumstances to control you. And so what happens is that what you're worrying about, your circumstances tell you about how you're going to feel. That's what worry does. Worry says you're going to feel like this. You're going to do this. Worry says you're not going to sleep. Worry says, you're going to have a bad day. So I got two words today. Pretty simple. They're not my words. Don't throw stones at me. All right. The words of Jesus, he said, don't worry. He said, stop. Three times in our text, in verse 25, in verse 31, in verse 34, Jesus said, don't worry. He repeats himself. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you know a little bit about your Bible and about the Jews, they didn't use exclamation marks. We use that. We put an exclamation mark. That means loud and strong. Listen, take this seriously. Exclamation mark. Bang. But they didn't use it. The Jews repeated things. Holy, holy, holy. They repeated things because by, by repeating it, they made the emphasis by repeating it. And sometimes I feel like I'm doing that with my kids. 
Uh, I feel like a bit, I'm a bit Jewish because I've got to repeat things over and over again. I try the exclamation mark by raising my voice. Do this, but no, no, they must be Jewish, I think, the kids, because you just got to keep repeating it. <laughs> by repeating it, Jesus was saying, this is very important. Pay attention. Take it seriously. Do not worry. Do not worry. And when we worry, this is what happens. We elevate the natural over the supernatural. You elevate your circumstances here over the supernatural. And Jesus says, don't take your eyes off me. I am a faithful God. And in Isaiah 6, uh, 26 verse 3, he says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. If we can keep our mind stayed on Jesus, if we can keep our faith in Jesus, you can have perfect peace. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. You don't. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And so Jesus understands. In fact, Jesus knows us well. Because he knows that we are inclined. We even have a predisposition to, to be anxious and to worry and to panic. Maybe you say today, well, pastor, I, I didn't bring this worry up. I don't know how it happened. It just started. I started feeling anxious. I started feeling worried. And Jesus knows. We're inclined, we're predisposed to worry about things. Why? Because we have no access to our future. God knows the future. He knows the end from the beginning. But we are limited. We don't know what is going to happen in the future. And I'm sure we could all agree that if we knew what was going to happen, we wouldn't worry quite as much. And so we're inclined, predisposed to worry. Why? Because we were not created like God. Uh, you know, we're not like God who knows the future, who knows everything. We don't know the future. We are limited to the now. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And so we worry. And worry doesn't help. It doesn't help. Who of you can add one cubit? You know, it's, I, I imagine it's talking about the height of somebody, one cubit to, the, to their stature. So I, I'm imagining somebody's laying in bed. They're worried because they're so short. <laughs> and Jesus says, a short person laying in bed, Sister Clarissa, <laughs> even if you worry all night, you're not going to grow one centimeter by worrying. But what, he, what Jesus is saying, he's using that illustration to say, worrying is useless. Worrying is a waste of time. You don't have to worry. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your stature? And so Corrie ten Boom said this. She was a great woman, uh, a great woman of God who spent time in the, um, yeah, the concentration camps. She said, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. War worry doesn't take the sorrow out of tomorrow. It empties today of its strength. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but it empties today of its strength. Worry drains us. It drains us from the ability to even face the problems that we have today. Worry is useless. Do not worry. And so you say, okay, pastor, all right, gotcha. Maybe you're tuning online, you're like, who's this crazy guy that just popped up on my Facebook thing telling me not to worry? I'm worried. Does God expect me to live in some sort of fairyland? You know, pretend that there's nothing to be concerned about? Does God expect me to bury my head in the sand? And does God expect me not to deal with reality? Maybe you say, Pastor, if you could only see what I'm looking at. If you could only be where I am, if you could only experience the circumstances that I have right now, if you could only know the crisis that I face, you would understand. And so, there is a place for concern. But Jesus said, there is no place to worry. And there's a difference. There's a difference. You see, I'm concerned about what I'm seeing in the world. Yes, COVID-19 is something to be concerned about. And we need to follow the directions that we are given to keep ourselves safe and other people safe. And, uh, but I don't believe, while I'm concerned, I shouldn't be worried. 
because I can trust God. God's got it. He's all powerful. And so the difference between worry and concern, worry and concern, it's important. The difference between worry and concern is the hold that it has on you. The hold that it has on you. You see, I own concern. I own it. But worry owns me. I control my level of concern. But worry controls me. It keeps me up at night. It keeps me sad. Worry tells me how to feel. Worry tells me how to act. Worry says, I'm going to keep you up all night. Worry is concern that is completely out of control. And so the difference between worry and concern is that I own concern, but worry owns us. I control my concern, but worry controls us. And some of us, we started out concerned. But we've allowed ourselves to become anxious. We've allowed ourselves to become worried. And Jesus simply says, he says this, he says, stop it. You don't have to worry. Now, let's go a little bit further. I kind of never looked at this scripture this way before. But if Jesus tells us to not do something, if he says, don't do it, then what is it if we do it? If we do something that God tells us not to, what is it? It's sin. And so we just gone a whole new level about worry. Because Jesus is saying, do not worry. In the Old Testament, it would have been worded, thou shalt not. And so when we worry, it's not just, oh, I'm just a worry wart. No. Jesus is saying, you're a sinner. Stop it. Thou shalt not. If God says, don't do it, and we do it, it is sin. And so why are we so worried? We don't have to worry. Jesus tells us, do not worry. And so why? Why is God so adamant that we should not worry? Why? Let me tell you why. Because worry, and this is what this text in Matthew 6 is telling us, worry is an insult to God. I'd be insulted if my kids were worried if they were going to get another meal. Correct? Yeah. If my kids were crying in their room and I walked and said, well, what's wrong? And they're all anxious and in bed and they're like, Daddy, we're just worried. Are you ever going to feed us again? I'd be like, kids, of course I will. What an insult. You know, are you ever going to pick us up from school? Of course we will. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. And, and, and when we worry, God says, that's an insult. We're telling God, God, you can take care of the birds. You can take care of the grass and the flowers. But God, I can't trust you to take care of me. And God says, I'm insulted. I'm offended. You don't trust me. And see, the reality is worry reveals a lack of trust. In God to take care of us. And we all, now let's not all act all high and mighty because we got to come to church today and we're all super spiritual, but we've all faced this snake at some time or other. This slithery snake that, that gets around our mind, gets into our mind, into our emotions. At some time, we've all had to deal with it. At some time in our life, that snake, it creeps in called concern. And then it just runs rampant and gets out of control. And it becomes worry and anxiety. And Jesus wants to set us free from that. He says, you don't have to worry. Put your faith in me. And so when Jesus began his earthly ministry, he, he quoted the prophet Isaiah, written hundreds of years ago. He quoted the prophet Isaiah when he was preaching in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Jesus quoted, he said, in, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he hath anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. Everyone say deliverance. To preach deliverance to the captives. And he's not just talking about people that have been captured by a foreign army. People have become captive to all sorts of things. Sin and shame, addictions. And you know what? A lot of people have become captive to worry as well. Controlled by worry. Worry has become your slave master. Worry has become your prison keeper. 
And Jesus said, I have come to set those people free. I've come to open the prison doors and set the captives free. Not just from sin, not just freedom from shame, not just freedom from guilt, but Jesus came to set us free from worry. Somebody say amen. 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 Jesus came to set us free from worry. He came to set us free. He didn't die on the cross. He didn't go all the way to the cross of Calvary for us to live in bondage to fear and worry and anxiety. And so Jesus says, don't worry. In verse 30, he links worry to having little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. And I guess that's why God is so insulted. He says, you've got so little faith in me. He didn't say, mind you, he said little faith. He didn't say faithless. There are times in the Bible where where the word faithless was used. But he didn't say faithless. He said, you of little faith. They just had a little faith. And you say, well, pastor, I've got, I've got faith, but how do I know if I've got enough faith? How do I know if I've got enough faith? Because you can have faith and worry. Because Jesus said, do not worry. And he said, you're worried and you have little faith. You see, what is faith? It is faith in God. And the reason you are worried about your circumstances and and the reason why is because you've got a little faith and when you reduce the size of your God everyone say the size in our perspective when we make God small then our faith becomes small and that's very easy in fact our perception doesn't change the reality that God is big large and in charge all those things No, it doesn't change. But in our perception, in our perspective, if God is small, then God is not strong. He's not all powerful. Then our little view of God is going to cause us to have little faith. And God says, that offends me. You've got to trust me. Faith in God. If we have little faith, it's because we're operating on a small understanding of God. If we've got little faith, it's because we're operating on a small viewpoint of God. Some of us need to get a true revelation, a true revealing, a true understanding of the greatness of God. Jesus said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Look at the birds, he said. Look up. Everyone say up. Look up. Look up. Look at the birds. Next time you're worrying, just look around at the birds and God takes care of them. Look at the birds, for they don't sow or reap or gather into barns. They don't hoard things and worry. I hope they've got enough for tomorrow. No, they don't hoard, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not more valuable than they? Are you not more valuable than they? Jesus says, you're more valuable than the birds. And that's how God operates. He takes care of them. He takes care of the beautiful flowers. He provides for them. We've still got to be responsible. The bird doesn't just lay back in its nest and say, I'm not going to worry. You know, with a beak open to sky. Feed me, God. Drop a seed. No. The bird wakes up in the morning, Brother Leon, and says, it's time to go to work. Why? Because there's a worm waiting for me. There's some seeds waiting for me. God has already provided. It's already there. You see, not worrying is not a reason to be lazy. You know, you brothers, you can't get up in the morning and say to your wife, I'm not going to work. Pastor said, don't worry. It's going to be all right, darling. Just check the bank account. There's money coming in. No. Trusting God says, I'm going to go to work. Like the bird goes to work looking for the worm. And I'm going to trust God that it's going to be there. And Jesus says this. He says, you don't have to worry. He says, it's the Christians that worry about those things and the non-Christians that worry about those things. The Gentiles, they're the ones, the non-believers are the ones that are worried. And so Jesus says, stop it. Put your trust in me. In verse 33, we know the scripture well, but seek first the kingdom of God. Everyone say first. Now I'm going to get really theologically deep for you right now. I've done this before. Maybe you've heard me talk about this. It's a very deep theological statement, but here it is. But seek ye first. First means first. Simple. Oh, but so deep. And so hard to do. 
First means first. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Does that mean there'll be no challenges? Does that mean there's going to be nothing to pray about? Does that mean there's going to be no trials and no troubles? No. If there were no challenges, there'd be no reason to trust God. But we don't have to worry. Because Jesus says, Daddy will take care of it. Daddy will take care of it. Your father will take care of it. He's got the power to do it. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can do everything. He will take care of it. He's got the power to do it. But even more, he's my daddy and he loves me. There's a lot of kids that have got fathers that have the power to do it. But they don't have the love to do it. But we've got a father who loves us. He is love. He is not promising us that everything's going to go exactly the way we wanted it to. He's not promising that there won't be things that we don't understand. But he tells us, he says, I love you. I care for you. I will provide your needs. Everyone say, not my wants. My needs. And he says, worry offends me. It offends me. So verse 25, don't worry about your life. Verse 31, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about tomorrow. One day, John Wesley was walking with a troubled man. He's walking along the road with his troubled man. And, and, and this man began to express his doubt as to the goodness of God. He said, John, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this worry and trouble that I got. Feeling anxious, John Wesley, I just don't know what to do. And at the same moment, Wesley saw a cow looking over a stone wall. Do you know, asked John Wesley, do you know why that cow is looking over the wall? Why is the cow looking over the wall? (laughs) No, said the worried man. "I I don't know. Don't know, John. Why is the cow looking over the wall? Wesley said, the cow is looking over the wall because it cannot see through the wall. And he said to the man that was so troubled and worried, he said, and that's what you've got to do with your trouble. That's what you've got to do with your worry. You've got to look past it. And see a faithful God. You see, faith enables us. It doesn't break that wall down. But faith enables us to look past the wall. To look over the wall. And to look beyond our circumstances. To look beyond our trials. To look beyond our troubles. And to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God. And some of us, we are like that cow. We've got a wall of worry. We've got a wall of anxiety all around us. And we're so blocked off, we can't see anything. We even doubt the goodness and faithfulness of God. But today I've come to tell you, I've come to give you a little step up today through the preaching. If you could just step up a little bit, you can see past all your troubles. You can see past all your trials. And you can see the goodness of God. You can see the faithfulness of God. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And so in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives us the cure for worry. He says you don't have to worry. And here it is in verse 25. He tells us, don't worry about your life. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? What was he saying? He was saying, you are, you are a spiritual being. You are an eternal being. Life is more than the here and now. Amen? And that's why when I talked the other day about Pastor Anthony Mangan, he's got a 96-year-old mother who's still preaching. And when COVID came, it hit Louisiana really, really bad. And so he said to his mom, he said, Mom, you're not allowed to come out of the house. You're not allowed to come to prayer meeting because you're 96 and you could die. You're not going to go to the hospital anymore and pray for people. You just got to stay home. And you know what she said to her son? Her son just happens to be in his 70s. But she said, Anthony, you can't scare me with heaven. You can't scare me with heaven. What was she saying? At worst, Anthony, I'm going to heaven. I am not a a, a natural being. I am a spiritual. I am an eternal being. I've got my eyes fixed on eternity. Worst case scenario, I'm going to be with my Jesus. 
And Jesus said, your life is more than the material things. Your life is more than food. And your body is more than clothing. You have got your eyes looking over the wall at eternal things. Life is more than just the physical. Life is not just about the pleasures here on earth, but something greater, a relationship with God and eternity. Life was not about the approval of man. Life is not about our, 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 ex, our extending our life here on earth. Let me tell you, we're, it is, we're all given a life, but one time we're coming an appointment with death. It is appointed to man once to die, and then cometh the judgment. Paul said it like this in Romans 8, For I reckon... The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let me tell you, Paul was looking over the wall. He could see some troubles. In fact, he wrote from prison. He could see some troubles, but he was looking over the world, the wall, and he said, you know, the troubles that I got now are nothing compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us when we get over to the other side. Amen. What did he say? He said, you're a spiritual and an eternal being. Life is more than just the here and now. And then he said, look at the birds. Look at the birds. And so when we look at the birds, it's not a lesson in laziness. Because they dig their worms. They scratch their bugs. They get their nests ready with strings and leaves. And if you look around, you'll see them doing it now. But what? They do all of that and God provides. God provides for them. God feeds them. Birds don't anxiously, I said it before, they don't hoard things. You don't go in your garden and find a big pile of, of, you know, of worms because they're worried about tomorrow. No, they just go out and they go out with faith knowing that God's going to take care of them. And Jesus said, look at the birds. The po- birds have taught us. The birds teach us that we can count on God. And then verse 32 tells us, worry shows a lack of faith in God. He says, for after all these things, the Gentiles, everyone say the unbelievers. The unbelievers are worried about those things. But your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. And so be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And that's why we pray, casting our cares to the Lord. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, Paul wrote that letter from jail. But he dismissed all the reasons. He looked over the wall. All the reasons that he could have been worried. He dismissed all of them. He dismissed all the reasons to be worried and to be anxious. And he was able to find the peace of God. Yes, I, I've, I've panicked. I'll tell you a little story. When I first began pastoring, this is the thing about being a pastor. Kind of like being a doctor, all right? Nobody goes to the doctor for something good. It's always bad. True? The only people that want to see doctors are people with problems. And I found as a pastor, and I grew up in a pastor's home, I knew these things. But then when I became responsible to God to care for the flock that God has made me overseer, the only people that talked to me were people with problems. And sometimes it became very overwhelming. And there was a time when even my phone call ringing made me start to panic. What's happened now? Who's dead? Who's depressed? Who's run away? Who's lost? Who wants me to pray against the spider in their house? <laughs> Not really. But I've had anxiety. I've, I know what it is to have the panic. I felt anxious. Yeah, I, I trust God, but you see, anxiety is something that use, it, it, it's used by the enemy to get into our heads. And it tries to paralyze us from doing anything, from anything. Seek first, and when you seek him, he will provide for you. He says, have no other allegiances. Have complete loyalty to Jesus, the King of Kings. That is the cure for worry. That is the cure for worry. Matthew 6, verse 34, and then it, he closes as I close. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow, tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is the trouble, its own trouble, the trouble thereof. There's enough trouble today. You see, many people's lives, one man once said, many people's lives are being crucified between two thieves. Everyone say two thieves. Just like Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Many people's lives are being crucified between two thieves. The thieves of today 
and the thieves of tomorrow. Worrying about today and worrying about tomorrow and their whole life and the energy has been sucked out. The, the enemy's got into their mind to the point that they can't do anything. And Jesus says, don't bring the burden of today, of tomorrow into today. He said, you've got enough trouble today to be concerned about don't worry about tomorrow. Don't take on the uncertainty of tomorrow when you've got enough to deal with today. We plan for tomorrow. Yes, we plan. But we don't get unraveled. Everyone say unraveled. We don't get unraveled about tomorrow. If the musicians could come. God has only promised us enough for today. He's only promised us enough for today. In Lamentations 3.22. You know, we say, well, what about tomorrow, pastor? What about tomorrow? Yes, we plan, but we don't get worried. God has only promised us enough for today. He said this, Though, through, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. They are new every day. There are new mercies every day. There is enough mercy for today. Don't worry about tomorrow, just today. Great is thy faithfulness. Jesus said in Luke, Matthew 6 as well, He said, give us this day our daily bread. God only wants us to be worried, with to, not worried. God only wants us to be concerned with today. Tomorrow, will take. He's got enough worry. Just focus on today. And so when you start worrying about tomorrow, you've gone ahead of God. You say, well, what about tomorrow, Pastor? Let me tell you what about tomorrow. God will meet you there and He'll give you new mercies in the morning. And He'll give you your daily bread to get through tomorrow. Our peace. We need peace. Let's stand in this place today. Peace. Peace. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts, protect your mind. You don't have to worry. Everybody say peace. Some of you have lost your peace. Some of you are so worried you can't sleep. Some of you are so worried that every day is a, a, a trial. Every day is full of trouble and worry. You're so worried. You've lost your peace. Let me tell you, you've lost your peace. But if you lost your phone, anyone hear what I said? If you lost your phone, you'd stop everything to find it, wouldn't you? Anyone know what I'm talking about? When you leave home and you haven't got your phone, oh my goodness, I haven't got my phone. What am I going to do? Panic. If only we were so worried about our peace as we are about our phone. When we lose our phone, we stop everything to find it. Let me tell you, you can find your peace in Jesus today. You can find your peace in Him. Don't be satisfied to walk out here again not knowing where your peace is. I want to tell you that Jesus is still the answer for the world today. If you're anxious, if you're worried, Jesus is the answer. And if there's anybody here listening to me today, online or here today, if you want your peace back, then you've got to start sorting out your priorities and seek first the kingdom of God. It's a matter of priorities. You see, the children of Israel had a testimony. In the wilderness, yes, in the wilderness, God provided food. He provided water from a rock, manna from heaven. We read in the Bible that ravens bought food. The disciples, they had to feed 5,000 men plus women and children. Jesus shows up. He multiplies the little and makes it much. Five loaves and two fishes. Jesus responds. He says, I am the bread of life. You won't thirst. You don't have to hunger if you just come to me. I want to tell somebody today that if you put your trust in Jesus, put your faith in God, get your priorities first, you can trust God and you don't even have to know how He's going to do it. But I'm just going to trust Him. Look up, consider the birds. Look down, look at the lilies. Stop looking around at your circumstances. Stop looking at the wall. Take a little step up from the Word of God. Look past your circumstances. Look past your worries. You see, there's an opportunity for you today to do a U-turn. There's an opportunity. You know your life has been headed in the wrong direction. You know that you're going on the wrong path. You're on that dual carriageway. There is an opportunity today to turn around and get everything right with God. You see, the enemy comes to seek, to kill, and destroy. And everything that he can't kill, he will try to steal it. And see, the enemy tries to steal 
your today with your worry about tomorrow. The enemy will come to threaten you with death tomorrow so that you can't enjoy today. Let me tell you, you don't have to worry. If I was the enemy, I'd try to steal your day. That's what he tries to, that's what he tries to do to us. He tries to steal out today to make us miserable, to make us stop, to, to stop the fun, to stop the joy. And, and I, he, he wants to worry us to death. But Jesus says to us in his word, you don't have to worry. Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't have to worry. Online, listen to me. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Jesus said it. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. Get your priorities right. You don't have to worry. Come on, let's lift our hands all across this place right now. God wants to release you from, from worry and anxiety, from fear about tomorrow. He wants to steal. The devil wants to steal your today. But Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Come on, let's just get into the throne room right now. As the musicians play the music, let us just have our hands raised. And let's just begin to seek God. Some of you need to reorder your priorities. It's a matter of reordering your life. Jesus is still the answer. Hallelujah, yes. You'll never fail me, Lord. Your soul to is open today. You come and find your peace again with Jesus. If you lost your phone, you wouldn't stop looking. Let me tell you, some of you have lost your peace. You can get it back today. Jesus is the answer. I'm broken inside. This altar is open. If you want to come and pray, you can pray at your seat. Wherever you are, let's find our peace today. Trust what you say that you're good, that you're good, and your love, your love is great. Oh, your love is great. I'm broken inside. Oh, I give you my love. I give you my life, Lord. Come on, at home. Somebody needs to find their peace today. To trust what you say. Why don't you listen to Jesus today? And your good and your love. Your love is good. And I'm broken inside. I give you my life. Oh, yes. There's freedom from anxiety. There's freedom from worry today. The answer is Jesus. Your 
your spirit strong in me my flesh may fail my God you never will I may be weak I may be weak your spirit strong in me Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You don't have to worry, church. You don't have to worry. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. When you go through the water, she said, I'll be with you. When you go through the fire, I will be there. You shall not be burned. Let me tell you, you don't have to worry. Maybe some of us need to just get our priorities around the right way. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all the things you're worried about will be taken care of. The needs, all your needs will be taken care of. You don't have to worry. Not even worrying can add one cubit to your stature. Don't worry about it. Leave it with God. He's more than able. Yes, I may be weak, but with His Spirit, I don't have to fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind.